guys. What's going on, guys? Zero the Gamer eight away here, bringing you a Never Know a Nation podcast. Hope you guys are doing well today. Uh, about this Know a Nation podcast, um, it will be basically related to gaming, tech, sports, uh, amusement parks, and also as well, movies and TV shows. So if you guys do enjoy uh, these podcasts, be sure to hit that follow button right here on Twitch. Uh, and also as well, um, appreciate everyone stopping by and listening. But uh, we'll get into the topics just in a minute. But uh, yeah, uh, if you guys do miss this podcast today, uh, you will be able to rewatch it on Twitch and the Twitch VODs. You can also will be able to rewatch it on YouTube as well. I put them on YouTube, uh, I think on Tuesdays. So uh, come and um, check out my YouTube. Be sure to subscribe over there as well because we put a lot of other content on there as well, gaming content. Well, uh, let's get on to our topics for the day. Uh, also, uh, the first topic we're going to talk about today is Microsoft making some Game Pass changes. Uh, Microsoft is working on uh, making some changes to Xbox Game Pass or PC Game Pass in a way and cloud gaming. Uh, I do have an article about it and we're going to uh, discuss it. Uh, let me find an article about it. Uh, Microsoft makes changes to Xbox Game Pass Quest, which comes from GameRant.com. Uh, uh, Microsoft makes several key adjustments to the way Xbox Game Pass Quest works, lowering the rewards for the program's exist task. Since the introduction of Xbox Game Pass Quest, subscribers have utilized the program to earn free Microsoft reward points for simple tasks and playing great games. It's an excitement program that encourages Xbox Game Pass subscribers to try new games and to stay active within the Xbox community. Microsoft continues to refine the program, though, as a new update, we'll be making some notable changes, specifically fewer rewards for simple tasks, but more options for bigger rewards. Xbox Game Pass Quest users have been capital have been capitalizing on a stream of accessibly attainable Microsoft reward points for some time via two very straightforward tasks. One quest task user to log into the Xbox Game Pass mobile app rewarded five points. That quest appears to have been removed entirely. The next tasked player with starting up any ex any Game Pass game rewarded 5 points. As well, that daily quest remains but only rewards 3 points. Suffice to say, Xbox Game Pass quest trickle of rewards is sufficient reduced. Uh, Microsoft is trying to make up for the uh, circling trickle of rewards with Ronder access to larger rewards. However, Xbox Game Pass Quest Big 1000 Point Reward for completing daily and weekly quests is now easier to attain. It's shrunk down to having player completed 20 daily quests, which should make it much easier to attain. Players can accidentally miss a day or still be rewarded. There are also two big bonus round rewards in March that more than wake up for the strickling trickle of points. However, they are differently a bit more involved than simply logging in. For 2,000 points, users are given um, multiple tasks including using Bing over 5 days or doing daily sets of tasks and more. Another bonus task for Women's History Month asks players to compete a single achievement for 500 points. Overall, 
It's a new game for Xbox Game Pass Quest participants, but does it make the sting of the easy daily rewards losing their value any less disappointment, of course? Nor does it remove the worry that Xbox is using temporary bonus rewards to cover what could be the long-term decreases in overall reward uh, dispersal. For those who depend on Microsoft rewards for access to Xbox Live Gold, this could prove to be disastrous. One question that hasn't been answered is why Microsoft made these changes to Xbox Game Pass Quest. In the first place, eight points a day fewer than before totals around 240 Microsoft points in a month. In turn, an Xbox Live Gold price costs 9,500 reward points. Removing these rewards seems unnecessary or even potential of given their relative small value. Perhaps there is more to the changes that Microsoft will better explain later. So what do you guys think of the Xbox uh, Game Pass changes to the Quest? I hope you guys uh, like the changes. I do like some of the changes that they that they said in the article and uh it's very interesting so uh i'll definitely have to give that a try sometime when i do a live stream for xbox game pass quest uh little miss wicked uh thank you so much for the follow cat Ka uh thank you so much for the follow uh doubtful mind thank you so much for the follow uh, just dropped by a quick follow. Hope you have a great stream. Thank you so much, Little Miss Wicked. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, dropping that follow. It means a lot to me. Welcome to Noah Nation. Appreciate you stopping by and listening. Hope you like that, uh, that first article I was talking about. So uh, thank you so much for uh, stopping on by. Uh, let's start with the next one. Uh, Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 2 leaks uh, are uh, are happening right now because uh, we are coming to the uh, close of Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 1. So Chapter 2 will be coming pretty soon, sometime this month. So uh, I th think I have an article about it. I'm not that sure, but um, I don't think I do. But yeah... Um, chapter three, uh, uh, chapter two, season three, um, I know will be coming out pretty soon. I think it might come maybe in March 22nd. I'm not really sure, but, uh, I do have an article about, about something about it, uh, that I can, uh, discuss here because I do have an article about it. So let me see if I can find it. Hmm. Oh, I think this might be it. Hopefully this is it. Oh, okay, this is the wrong one. Is it GameSpot? It might be GameSpot. Yeah, it's not GameSpot. Huh. I had something over here. Let me find it, actually. Hold on, guys. Yeah. I think this might be it. This comes from uh, jguricon.com. Uh, let's read it. But yeah, this comes from this website. It's about the coming start update, the time, and the leaks that have been happening. So uh, here we go. As we inch closer and closer towards a new era of Fortnite players have begun to wonder when Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 2 will come out. Every Fortnite season brings with it a lot of hype and excitement as players agnostiously await the opportunity to experience brand new content. 
Let's go over the Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 2 release date, rumors, and leaks related to Chapter 3 Season 2, and much more. Uh, Fortnite Chapter 2, uh, Chapter 3 Season 1 began on December 5th, 2021, shortly after the Fortnite The End event. The Cube Queen unleashed a terror on the Apollo, resulting in the Fortnite The Foundation. Agent Jonesy uh, flipping the island on its axis, giving us the Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 1 flipped. In the time since players have had the chance to experience Fortnite Winterfest 2021, the emergence of Fortnite Tornadoes and Lightning, Fortnite Colombos, various crossovers including Fortnite Bruno Mars, and a series of themed wild weeks like the Fortnite Evian Ambush Week. As you can see, Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 1 has been an action pack and up until the very end. All in all, Chapter 3 Season 1 will have a spin of 104 days. The agarral season of Chapter 3 will end on March 19th, 2022. Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 1 does the season new Fortnite season comes out. If Epic Games keeps true to its routine of regular scheduled Tuesday updates, we can expect Chapter 3 Season 2 to release on March 22nd, 2022. However, it is possible that Epic Games will jump the gun and immediately unveil Chapter 2 the moment Season 1 comes to a close. In the case, the new season of Fortnite will start on March 20th. Until the exact date is unnecessary, we can make a uh, educate guess that the new Fortnite season will release between the dates of March 20th and March 2022. As of now, there is no special season uh, ending event scheduled for Chapter 3 Season 1. This means that the transition into Chapter 3 Season 2 will probably be rather anti-climatic. And then... And then this just talks about the ever tips as well. But what do you guys think of Fortnite uh, Chapter 3 Season uh, season 2 date leaks and and times that it could be coming out? Uh, what do you guys think of it? Are you guys excited for Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 2? Hope, it, um, hope you guys are pretty excited about it. And hopefully we'll probably we'll see probably maybe some little bit of some map changes. So I don't I really don't hundred percent know. So let me get on to the next article. Next article is uh, Nintendo is getting very weird with the Wii, and I do have an article about that. Uh, Nintendo is getting really suspicious with the Wii. Uh, I found an article about this, and this article is very strange and weird. What Nintendo wants. Uh, wants to do with the Wii, because you know the Wii, the Wii U um, eShops are closing, and I know the Nintendo DS eShops are closing. So you guys have a little bit of time before the end of this year, a beginning of 2023, that you guys will still have a lot of time to buy most of the games that you can get through the eShop before they shut down before 2023. So you guys have a lot of time. So here's the article about it. Uh, Nintendo announces all still functioning Wiis will self-destruct in 2023. Nintendo has caused controversy by announcing that any Nintendo Wii that's still in working order will incinerate upon an upcoming date next year. Uh, due to ex uh, due to changing standards in the gaming industry and better hardware being available. We think it's best if every single Wii that is still in work, perfect working order just bursts into flame one day next year, said Doug Bowser, president of Nintendo of America. Just melting and shooting parts all over across the room once we get this new Switch sports game out. We really don't want anyone enjoying a past version of it. I'm sure you understand. The announcement was met with a predictable accession of criticism that needs to be greet most of Nintendo's news as of late. Uh, why does this surprise me, said Golden Hall, a concerned Nintendo fan. Between suing fans that makes games stopping melee tournaments, 
from happening and shutting down the 3DS and the Wii U stores. The tournament literally seems like it's doing everything it can to be ultimate to every fan of theirs. If they haven't made 7 of my 10 favorite games, I have probably stopped supporting them. Those absolute bastards. In addition to the traditional gaming demographics, the Nintendo Wii's motion controls and recreations of popular sports like bowling, golf made it popular among elderly gamers, a factor many are considering Nintendo to take into consideration before they voluntarily explode any of the hundred a million units sold that are still operating. Nintendo doesn't care what we think, said Elena uh, Axelfrope, a gaming journalist. Never have, never will. They have what they are doing. They know how many nursing homes still have Wii's installed in rec rooms. If they do what they are threatening to do, their signature bright red logo will no longer remind me of Mario's hat instead of blood of my grandparents. It will be on their hands. I've been a normal company just one time. As of the past time, Nintendo revealed that they were hard at work figuring out how they were going to get you to access to Super Mario Bros. Free for the sixth time. And this seems very strange and very weird when I read this article. It, it does feel very weird uh, how long the Wii's have still been in operation for a very long time. So it's it's kind of funny, but it's kind of strange to me. Uh, Young Streets, what's up, man? How you doing today? Uh, welcome to the stream. I hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much for listening. Um... So let's find the next article that I'm going to talk about. Uh, Indiana Jones 5 time travel rumors have been uh, have been leaked around uh, for the upcoming Indiana Jones 5 movie. It's supposed to release uh, next year in June. So um, I have an article about it, about Indiana Jones 5, about these time travel rumors. That could be very interesting. That could lead to the very first Indiana Jones movie if they go back and actually in time of that. So it's going to be very weird. But yeah, here's an article about it. And this comes from ScreenRant.com. Indiana Jones 5 time travels could be flipped the franchise ending trope. With Indiana Jones 5 rumored to include time travel, it is entirely possible that the upcoming sequel will change the franchise's usual ending drop. By including the time travel, Indiana Jones 5 could change one of the franchise's common ending drops. Starting with Raiders of the Lost Ark back in 1981, the Indiana Jones franchise quickly established itself as one of the most beloved and iconic in all of cinema. The treacherous archaeologist adventure himself is considered one of the greatest movie characters of all time. He is set to re set to return in Indiana Jones 5. After images have surfaced uh, supporting long-standing rumors that Indiana Jones 5 will feature time travel, it seems that that much uh, anticipated sequel may see Indies hop through time. Exactly how the film might totalize the potential plot device isn't yet known, but it is intriguing prospect particularly as the f previous film have all used uh, elements of the supernatural while many believe that indiana jones 5's time travel could be great it also has a potential of suburb of one of the franchise's trademark ending drops despite making some of the greatest on-screen uh, discoveries known to the main the ark of the covenant uh Sarkiraria stone the Holy Grail, proof of alien life, Indy has never received any formal credit for any of them. He might be one of the most iconic adventures of all time, but he's never made a lasting, trendable impression on history within his film's narratives. This is something that Indiana Jones 5's time travel story could fix by having him directly interact with the history as if it happens. Indy still finally makes his way into the history books, an opportunity that each of his previous films 
has so far denied him. The story of the Temple of Doom includes the human sacrifice, the horde of kidnapping children, and a stolen Soraka stone. The latter is scared to stone that any believes that it was given to humanity by the gods to help in the fight against evil, that this is a relic of good, great power upon being his search for the stolen uh, for the stolen stone. And he discovers as as an evil coat operating out of an undescribable temple, uh, kidnapping children as a force. And then the rest of the film plot sees Indiana Jones fighting against. Uh, okay, blah, blah blah blah. Yeah, it just goes on from there, and it just talks about just talks about all the rec the recent films from from back in the time. But yeah, what do you guys think of this uh, Indiana Jones Five time travel rumor? Do you think it will definitely will save the Indiana Jones uh, franchise? Do you think this will be actually better than the Crystal Skull? That just came out, I think, in 2009. I think 2009 or 2007. I'm not sure. Let me let me look it up. Let me look it up. Let me look it up. Okay, 2008. I was a little bit off. Okay, just one date off. So yeah, 2008. Uh, that that movie came out so hopefully it'll be hopefully it'll be better in 2023 this movie hopefully um also as well um russian esports teams have been getting cancel culture recently because of the uh the ukraine and the um russian war that's been going on recently uh the past the past months since it's been happening recently so um uh, Russian esports teams are getting cancel culture. So I do have an article about it. Of what's been going on. But it's been getting really strange and really weird. Uh, Russian esports team uh, Vitrus Pro blames ESL suspensions on cancel culture. Uh, the team lashed out against ESL but said it could prevent its players from competing under natural names. The Russian esports team Vitral Pro says its suspension from the ESL competition announced early this week and for promise to the Russian invasion of the Ukraine is a prime example of cancel culture. It won't prevent its players from competing under a natural name. However, a compromising allowed by the ESL, similar to the approach of the International Olympic Committee, took for Russia when it was discovered in 2015, but the country ran a stat sponsored doping uh, program for athletes esl is one of the world's largest best known esports organized organizers announced on march 2nd it will not allow organizations with apparent ties to the russian government including uh individuals or organizations under a leech confirmed eu sanctions related to the ukraine conflict to compete in its events Two Russian esports teams were internationally targeted for Saction Vitrus Pro and Gambit. Vitrus Pro has now uh, issued a statement in response to the ESL action. It is clear to not please that are no reaction reasons to suspend us from playing in tournaments apart from pre justice for sure from the outside. The team said in the statement released today it happened to Dubai with We Play Event. It keeps on happening. Uh, the Indie We Play event in question is the Gamers Galaxy Dota 2 uh, Inventational Series Dubai, which is reportedly asked Vitrus Plus to play without its tag, jersey, and affiliations to a particular club or country. In a uh, statement released on March 1st, one day before the tournament began, Vitrus Pro refused the offer, saying it would not fall for the emulation according to yahoo news reporting that the team was essentially disqualified we play is not affiliate with esl but it appears that the line it drew its willingness to stand by it made a impression of virtuous pro management the team uh derided the esl suspension as a prime example of cancel culture in its most uh recent statement but also said it would not forbid its players from taking part of the competition on vitriol colors. 
if they want to. So yeah, this is um this is a uh, very strange, but I can definitely not blame uh, the ESL of suspending the uh, Russia esports teams because of uh, the war that's been going on. So um, it's very weird. But what do you guys think about that? Do you think they deserve it, or do you think they do not deserve it? Uh, let, let me let me know, guys, uh, that you are listening. I appreciate you guys listening to the articles, but yeah. Um, let's start with the next article. Uh, we got a Mario Kart 9 uh, being teased, but uh, it's rechanging its name apparently to Mario Kart X, which is going to be the next Mario Kart game that's supposed to come out in the near future. Uh, there's no like date or anything, but it's in the works. But uh, I do have an article about it. And it's about... Mario Kart X leaked by Nintendo Insider. Uh, let me drink my water real quick. And I'll start reading this. Um, Mario, Kart, uh, a, uh, Mario Kart X leaked by Nintendo Insider. According to the prompt Nintendo Insider, Mario Kart, X, uh, Mario Kart X is the next Mario Kart game, which simply confirms rumblings that Mario Kart... Home Circuit is viewed international uh, intentionally by Nintendo as Mario Kart 9. Adding to this, the new report about the next Mario Kart game claims it will be a soft reboot and lean into crossovers. And this is where the name Mario Kart X comes into play. Not only is X the Roman numeral of 10, but it's also meant to present crossover. And the next Mario Kart game is reportedly going big on the crossover. Uh, report comes the way of Zipio, who notes, while the game will serve as a soft reboot for the series, it doesn't mean it's going to be only old courses from the first game. In fact, Zipio notes fans shouldn't expect any old courses with the crossover aspect, set to be re realized not just with characters and items, but courses. Uh, multiple sources familiar with the situation have informed me that the new Mario Kart is being positioned as a soft reboot. This is to say, the core aspect of Mario Kart aren't going anywhere, and of course, the core Mario Kart cast aren't either, said Zippio. Do not expect old courses to appear in the base game. The game will heavily lean into the crossover aspect, which includes characters, courses, and items. According to Zipplio, Mario Kart X has been in development for four years. Despite this, it is released maybe ways off as Nintendo is prepared to hold the game until the Nintendo Switch 2 release. Right now, they have been rumors of a new Nintendo console, but that's it. Most rumors suggest the console won't be out until 2024. The game has reportedly been in development for about four years now. Given the ongoing mysterious situation with Nintendo's with Switch 2, it will be quite some time before we see the game in action, said Ziplio. As always, take everything here with a grain of salt. Zipio is one of the most reliable Nintendo insiders, but that doesn't change the fact that everything here is unofficial. Fervor, even if this is all for accurate, it may not say the way as everything is subject to change in game development. And that's pretty much it. So what do you guys think of Mario Kart X or Mario Kart 9? What do you guys think of that? Do you think it's going to be better than Mario Kart 8? Do you think it will sell better than Mario Kart 8 uh, for the next uh, Nintendo Switch console? Well, let me let me know down in the comments or uh, in the stream right now um, what do you guys think of it. You think it's going to be great? I think it'll be pretty a pretty good game. Hopefully, they'll come with better features than the eighth game did. So we'll have to see. We'll definitely will have to see. Also, as well, um, Overwatch Two team teases an anti toxic feature that could be coming to the game uh, real soon. Uh, you guys can also sign up for the 
Overwatch 2 beta that they just announced, um, I think uh, today or yesterday, that you can actually opt in for the Overwatch 2 beta that's supposed to be coming out sometime soon from the Overwatch 2 team. I'm pretty excited. Hopefully it'll be opened for beta for Xbox so I can play it. So um, if you guys do want to get it right away, uh, you can go and opt in on the uh, Blizzard uh, on Blizzard.com, I think. So uh, go and check that uh, check that out if you guys can. But yeah, uh, Overwatch Two Team teases an anti-toxic feature that could be coming to the game uh, sometime sometime in the future or sometime uh, when the game comes out. Um, let me see it here. Let me find it. I think I have it right here. Oh yeah, here it is. So, Overwatch 2 devs tease a new anti-toxic feature. The Overwatch 2 developers have teased some new features that aim to target toxic in-game. Uh, toxicity in Overwatch has been a problem since the game was first released back in 2016, with the game being so teamwork-focused. The solo queue environment has run constantly to the hero shooter design. As such, it is not uncommon to see teammates flamed for picking heroes that aren't in the meta or may not sync up well with what the rest of the squad is choosing, uh, resulting in some ugly arguments. Luckily, it seems like Blizzard is ready to redeem this with Overwatch 2 with features that extend beyond the report functions that currently exist. Overwatch improving and toxicity measures. In a post of the official Blizzard forums, community manager Andy B responds to fans concerned with the amount of tux in-game, uh, especially in regards to those facing harassment. Uh, we are working on improving our anti-toxicity measures for the future, he revealed. We will definitely update everyone when we have uh, details ready to share. It is not clear exactly what these measures will be, but the tone is very similar to his comments for those anxious waiting on Overwatch 2 beta. As Dexter's first reported, the Overwatch League will be giving pros access to the Overwatch 2 beta within two week time, suggesting that the player base as a whole could be getting it soon too. Leaks have claimed that the beta could be, could be going uh, live sometime in March. But nothing has been announced just yet. In any case, uh, expect news about the long-waiting sequel. Have new anti-toxic measures in the weeks ahead. We can inch closer and closer to the fifth Overwatch League season. So what do you guys think of this uh, anti-toxic feature that could be coming to Overwatch 2? Do you think it actually will combat, uh, combat the anti-toxicity that's been going around in-game for Overwatch 2? Uh, let me know down in the comments or in the live um, what you guys think of that. And uh, also as well, let me get on to the next topic. Also as well, um, also as well, I didn't have, I think I didn't put Snoop Dogg on here. But also as well, uh, Snoop Dogg just officially announced that he will be joining FaZe Clan. It is officially confirmed. It was like a leak for a very long time, but now it's officially confirmed that Snoop Dogg is officially joining FaZe Clan. I do have an article about it, and we'll uh, talk about it. Uh, Snoop Dogg joins FaZe Clan. Um, noting hip-hop artist Electrical uh, Lettuce uh, and Fractionito, Snoop Dogg is now a member of FaZe Clan. The digital native lifestyle and media platform room rooted in gaming and youth culture announced today that face snoop has officially dubbed as at least within the context of clan business will join face clan board of directors after the company goes public later this year we also co-create content uh, participate in key business initiatives and launch merchandise with the brand as the member of the ro roster the organic relationship between FaZe and Snoof have been building for years now, 
so we are thrilling to officially welcome Faze Snoop to the family. Uh, Faze Clan uh, Chief uh, Strate Strategy Officer Kaya Henry said, As the original internet kid and first generation gamer, Snoop has been understanding the culture and connecting between music, lifestyle, and gaming. Today, Snoop is a prominent voice in the emerging web free community, and we have an exciting plan to create together in the metaverse, driving new engagement opportunities for both our fan bases. Snoop Gamer Cred is definitely well established. He made a big impression on Terry Crews at EA's 2016 Battlefield 1 livestream, launched its own esports league, and streams on Twitch to game and vibe. But in spite of that, Snoop came to face for the same reason that most a breach pop culture icons get involved in something new. His kids talked to him into it. And then here's what Snoop had to say. Uh, the youth identity with their brand and something that my son Cordell knew, which why he bought us together. And uh, this comes from Cordell Bordis. Uh... As I've been watching Face Clan has been building in the gaming space, I knew there was a natural connection with what my dad has been doing. Uh, when I took at the two brands, uh, I was inspired by the synergy that could create, so I bought them together in this partnership. I can't wait for the world to see what we are about to do. Uh, FaZe has a number of other people on its roster who aren't pro gamers including nfl oh yeah just, just talks about just talks about the rest of it but yeah what do you guys think of uh snoop Dogg joining face clan do you think it's gonna be it, it's gonna be great for the gaming industry for a pop culture uh music artist to be a part of a esports organization a face clan what do you guys think of it in the comments what do you guys think in the live right now of about snoop Dogg joining face clan I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be absolutely great. I think it's going to be great for the gaming industry and also the uh, pop culture. I think it's going to be great. And I think a lot of other people probably will join an esports scene maybe later on in the near future. So it open it opens to other people. Also, Nintendo 64 game coming to Steam. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors going around that any Nintendo 64 game that did not make it to the Nintendo Switch could be actually could be coming to uh, Steam, and I do have a article about that, and then we'll uh, talk about it. Uh, cult classic Nintendo sixty four game getting a release on Steam. A classical game that at first appeared on the Nintendo sixty four is soon getting to get a released on. PC and Steam. But in the past few months, a number of popular 64 titles have been making a re emergency, primarily thanks to the new Nintendo 64 library tied to the Nintendo Switch Online. While the Nintendo Switch Online service is ongoing to keep adding new Nintendo 64 games over time, one classic will not now be coming to PC within the next month. For one reason or another, Harboso Interactivity Iconic Performer Glover was stayed to confirm to be released on PC Steam next month. Especially this new version of the title, which is developed by Pico Interactive, will be released on April 20th. It will look to improve the visuals were seen in the original title for those who have not been very familiar with Glover. Uh, the game first launched on Nintendo 64 and PC back in 1998, before it later come, came to PlayStation in 1999. As a whole, Glover was never all about well-received by fans or critics, but it stood out as one of the most unique games of the Nintendo 64 era thanks to novel playstyle. Glover is a puzzle incentive adventure game made up of six worlds with 30 different levels. You can control a Kamasa glove that walks on two fingers, slaps harder than Steve Austin's dribble faster from Scotty Pippen, plays with a bouncer rubber ball. So that's what the game is basically about, but what do you guys think of this? Um, 
this classic game that was really popular on the Nintendo 64 era uh, that's coming to Steam. What do you guys think of it? Are you guys going to be picking it up uh, because of the because of the game that was on the Nintendo 64? I'm sure some some of the fans probably will. If you guys have heard about that game before, but uh, what do you guys think of it? Do you think it's going to be good? Uh, let me know down in the live or in the comments on YouTube. So uh, let's start with the, the next article we have as well. Let me find it. So uh, there is a big rumor going around that Twitch is taking action towards Russian streamers. And this goes probably towards the Ukraine and Russia invasion that is going on in um, around the world. So uh, I do see a lot of uh, industries coming around that Twitch is taking uh, some things that are uh, pretty off topic here. But uh, we're going to talk about it in this article here as well. Uh, Twitch drops payments to Russian streamers due to sanctions. Russian Twitch streamers have claimed that they're unable to be paid out earnings from their broadcasts as sanctions are imposed the following the country's invasion of Ukraine. Russian companies and billionaires and sports people and now even influencers are feeling the effects of the growing problems between Russia and Ukraine. Early in March 2022, Twitch streamer Myra claimed that the Amazon owned platform were looking for a reason to ban her due to her Russian heritage. Just days later, Russian streamers are claiming that they can't get paid due to sanctions. They are reportedly started to receive emails confirming that payments to their account has been blocked, according to the Washington Post. Uh, and this comes uh, and this comes from the, the email reportedly saying, payouts to the financial institution associated with our Twitch accounts has been blocked as a result of sanctions. Uh, Twitch uh, complies with the economic sanctions imposed by the United States and other governments that is complying with those imposed the responses to the situation in Ukraine. Those sanctions may limit or impact your access to payouts, ability to monetize your stream and finally support other creators. Uh, and this comes from the email. We do our best to pay your, your, your revenue and you have earned as soon as you permitted to do, to do so. I've been blocked from the payment from Twitch that may advertise have left the Russian market and my Visa MasterCards will soon be blocked aboard. Uh, this comes from Xavier, uh, Jesus of Jin, uh, Ganoff, who moved from Russia to the U.S., uh, it is unclear what exactly will happen down the line, but the emails from Twitch does that, that we appreciate on now frustrating and difficult this is. We will reassure you that you can't provide any alternate financial institutions. We will do our best to pay your uh, pay you revenue and you have earned as soon as we permitted to do so. Uh, this is very crazy uh, why Twitch is doing this, but I don't blame Twitch doing this because it's between the Russians and the Ukraine invasion. So a lot of people are going to pretty much, a lot of companies are going to basically drop uh, anything that's related to Russia. So it's uh, it's very difficult for the, the streaming industry and it's sad and it's really difficult. And I've even heard a lot of Russian streamers are getting hate off of this. So, and then they're getting called out and it's it's really bad. It's It's really sad to really see it. And it's difficult. So it is what it is. Um, and also as well, uh, Russell Wilson is basically supposed to be uh, on the Broncos. Uh, he has confirmed the trade uh, from the Seattle uh, Seahawks where he has played throughout his whole career. He will be uh, moving to the Broncos. He will be playing with them. Uh, this season, which that is probably a big W for the Broncos since the Broncos haven't been really that great since the Peyton era in uh, 2015 when they were in the Super Bowl. I was watching that game a little bit at the time, but uh, yeah, um, it's good to see Russell Wilson go to the Broncos. 
hopefully he will make the team uh better hopefully so uh definitely we'll keep an eye on that team um also as well march uh, xbox updates have been revealed uh there is an article about it and i will read it to you guys just in a minute Xbox One and Xbox Series X March Updates Revealed Xbox March Update was officially announced this week with three key features to look forward to. The ability to pin different games to Xbox Resume functions. The option is to remap different inputs to your controller's share button. And the Auto Setup Wizard feature to allow for quick setups when connecting your console to HDMI compatible devices. As a small part of the update, Xbox also announced that the latest firmware update for various controllers is now available, too. So if you got one of the devices that just got re latest release, you should be hopefully be experimenting improved performance now. Of uh, the features mentioned above, the biggest two will undoubtedly be the pin to quick resume option, as well as the ability to remap the share button. The first of those lets you refer makes makes use of a quick resume feature, which already allows people to snap back. Fourth between games and other apps. Following the download of this update, we'll be able to pin up to two games in quick resume. That means those games will always will be left in a suspended state if you exit out of them. In the favor of another app so that you can quickly hop back in, it sounds like a useful feature for those who have one or two standby games that always put uh, that always play, but want to try out other releases on or Xbox Game Pass games. Remapping the share button is a pretty self-explanatory feature that was discussed previously. Whenever the option to do so release as part of the Xbox Insider update. If you find yourself not using the share button often to record gameplay and other moments, you can simply use the Xbox accessory app to remap the button to different inputs, as a list of compatible inputs can be found within that app. But Xbox gave a quick list of some of the functions you can assist it. Uh, the update Xbox accessory app unlocks new button remapping actions for Xbox accessory, including share button remapping for the actions like mute TV, open friends list, open achievements, and many others, the Xbox update posted said. The ability to refine your controller actions also provide a, a way easily enable assisted technology for gamers with disability, the Elite Series 2 controllers, Xbox adaptive controllers, and other devices that have some new actions as well. And Xbox related for the Xbox One, the Xbox Series X and S consoles should be rolling out now for console owners to download. So what do you guys think of this uh, Xbox One and Xbox Series X March update that has been revealed? What do you guys think of it? You think you think it's going to be good? And yeah. And uh, Mac, uh, Mac, thank you so much for the uh, follow. I really appreciate it. Welcome to Noah Nation. My dude, I really appreciate you stopping by. But yeah, welcome to the Noah Nation podcast. Hope you are enjoying uh, this article uh, that I got so far. Um, let me find another find another one. Let me clear my uh, notifications real quick. Uh, we already talked about Fortnite chapter three updates, so we're gonna skip that and go to the Elder Ring. Uh, Elder Ring players are buying runes on eBay. And I do have an article about that. How much blah 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 can you get on a Saturday, lad? What do you mean, uh, Max? I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused with that. What you said. Um, let me see. But yeah, here we go. So yeah, here's the uh, the article about the Elden Ring. The Elden Ring players are buying millions of runes on eBay. Be warned, gray uh, market 
rune of sales should earn you a ban. You probably shouldn't try to buy or sell uh, Elden uh, Ring runes on eBay. But in case you're wondering, that is a thing now. A quick uh, search on eBay reveals dozens of listings offering millions of runes for anywhere from 20, uh, 10 to $25. When some listing advertising hundreds of millions of runes for several hundred dollars. So far, it looks like a new hundred listing have sold through. Since there's no way to directly send runes, the currently players used to level up from one account to another in the Elden Ring. These gray market deals are going down like a classic MMO item swap. The seller sets a time and a place summoners the buyer into their world as a co-op partner, drops the uh, agreed upon number of runes on the ground for the buyer to pick up, and the two part ways. At least that's how it's supposed to go down, but some of these sales seem to be going through in an attended uh, Eero Gamer ED uh, Nightingale bought some runes himself as we won't have to. The whole thing is probably a bad idea. Which probably explains it. Uh, for the one, you could be wasting your time with a scam, but it's also confirmed noting that pure IGN buying or selling items with real money inviolates the Elder other rings term of services players who participate in these let's let's uh trade trades uh leave themselves open to from from software wiping their runes wallet remotely spending their account or getting banned uh then there is a fact that the methods of those ebay vendors are using to accrue piles of ruins isn't uh rocket science they seem to be exploding on an item, a uh, dysfunctioning bug involving co-op that hasn't been around since Dark Souls 3. If, you, if you're if you dead set on boosting your strength on the way to 99, there are smarter ways from sending $15 to some rando on eBay. If you are playing on PC, Elder Ring cheats already exist for free so long as you stay offline. Uh, even if I did, uh, okay, it just talks about everything else, but what do you guys think of this, uh, Elden Ring eBay thing? Uh, I'm not really 100%, uh, play the Elden Ring, but I've seen a lot of good gameplay about the Elden Ring. But, uh, it looks like a pretty good game, and it looks pretty promising. So, yeah. So, um, let's get on to the next article here. Um, Kohl's is no longer to be an apartment store because there's a lot of things that have been going around with that company recently with financial issues and stuff. And of course, Amazon, uh, becoming the new shop to shop place. So, uh, Kohl's could be in pretty desperate of, uh, not being an apartment store anymore. Which kind of is frustrating because I have been to Kohl, uh, to, a Kohl, uh, to a couple Kohl. Uh, buildings before, so that could probably be changing in the future. So let me drink my water real quick. Uh, Cole says it's no longer a department store. Cole's is under an intense pressure from the Wall Street Raiders and up against uh, stiff competition from Amazon, Target, and others. Now it's hoping that an overhaul its brand image can break back those frets. Kohl's announced plans Monday to add a uh, Sephora mini, sh mini shops to roughly 75% of its 1,100 US stores. Open 100 new locations at half the size of its traditional outlets in the next four years, increasing popular Kohl's cash reward programs to 7.5% on purchase to up to 5%. Kohl's also unveiled new strategies to grow online, including self-supervised for pickup orders and returns. Uh, the approaches are part of a large uh, attempt to change how customers see the Kohl's brand amid a department store sector that has been declined for years. Uh, traditional uh, chains such as Sears, JCPenney's, and others had been forced to, into bankruptcy, prompting Kohl's to search for new ways to connect with 
shoppers. Uh, Kohl's has lost 70% of its market, market share since 2011, primarily to discount stores such as TJ Maxx, Amazon, and rival clothing brands, including the USB and Animal's J. Soul. Yeah, and it just goes on from there, but yeah, it's really crazy how Kohl's is going through a lot of this because it kind of sucks. Uh, Kohl's not being no longer a an apartment store, which I don't blame Kohl's of doing that because uh, they want to compete with Amazon and Target because those are those are its big competitors out there and basically Amazon because Amazon's the best place to shop for anything. So I wouldn't be really surprised about that. So of them doing that. Also, as well, uh, Super Nintendo World in uh, Hollywood could be uh, has its actual opening date. Uh, we I do have an article about that, and we will discuss. Uh, Super Nintendo World will open at Universal Studios Hollywood in 2023. Universal announced today construction is already underway on what will be the first Nintendo World in the United States. Universal Studios' first Super Nintendo World opened in Japan in 2021. The U.S. debut of the Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Hollywood promises to transport theme park guests and Nintendo fans into the world of Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach to become part of their compelling universe. Uh, Universal Studios Orlando will also get a Super Nintendo World. The immersed land is described as a visual speculate spectacle, vibrant colors, and architectural ingenuity located within a new expanded area of, of the theme park, featuring a groundbreaking ride and interactive areas. And, uh, yeah, and just talks all about that, but yeah. But yeah, it just talks about just talks about everything else, but what do you guys think of uh, S uh, Super Nintendo World opening in the Universal uh, theme parks here in the U.S.? Uh, it looks pretty exciting and compromising. Uh, I've watched a lot of YouTubers about the Super Nintendo World, but it's supposed to expect to open uh, sometime in 2023. Uh, they delayed it. It was supposed to open sometime this year, but they delayed it to 2023. So you guys will have to wait until next year to see a uh, Super Nintendo World open. I'm guessing that this park will actually will open uh, sometime maybe in January uh, 2023 or maybe sometime in March of 2023. So who knows when it'll be opened, maybe in the summertime that they promised to say that they were supposed to open Super Nintendo World. But I don't know. Time will tell. Time will tell when it'll be opened. But when it does, hopefully I will be able to see it and maybe do a vlog for it. So hopefully I will go back to Universal Studios once again just to see Super Nintendo World. I think that's the only thing I really want to see. And Secret Life of Pets, of course. So um, hopefully I will be able to um, go see that. Hopefully. Um... And uh, I'm going to skip some of the things, but also as well, of course, you got the Xbox Showcase that's supposed to be next Wednesday. I won't be reading the article about it, but yeah, um, the Xbox Showcase is supposed to happen uh, next week on the 16th, which that is a Wednesday, and that will be at 10 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time, and that would be... Um, 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time on the East Coast. So, uh, be sure to mark that calendar on Wednesday. Uh, I think the 16th. So, be sure to go and check that out on Twitch Gaming's uh, Twitch channel. Uh, also, as well, the final things before I end this podcast for the day. Uh, MLB has confirmed uh, their agreement deal with the CBA and the MLBA. Uh, they have announced that they confirmed that deal, that we will actually be getting 162 uh, 
game season. It's going to actually be awesome. It's going to be great uh, for MLB. I'm pretty excited and I'm stoked. But they should have done it a long time ago. But uh, I honestly am pretty happy about that. So it's going to be awesome. And also as well, uh, there are some things that are coming up pretty soon uh, for me as a streamer and a content creator. Uh, I will be announcing something on Monday that me and Rusty and Dr. Carbine have been working on uh, this week about it. It's going to be absolutely great. And also, you guys have rewarded NASCAR Heat Fire to come back to live streaming. That is coming back to uh, Twitch on March 26th, which is a Saturday. Uh, hope you guys are definitely are more and willing to come and participate in that. So, yeah. And I think that's going to do it for me today uh, with this podcast. I will see you guys in about uh, two hours, two and a half hours. Um, I will be doing um, Fortnite and Animal Crossing. Uh, That will be streamed right here on Twitch. So I hope to see you guys there for two of those games. Uh, Those will be both on Nintendo Switch. So if you guys do want to join and be part of the call and everything just join my discord if you like uh i'll put it down in my uh stream as well but yeah if you guys do want to join my discord uh there's a link to my discord if you guys do want to join and be part of the community and be part of the stream today but uh thank you guys so much for watching uh know the gamer ate away here um I'll go ahead and host someone and uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in about two hours and thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. So uh, see you guys in about two hours.